This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. I'm Oisín Langan. Coming to you from Oriel Park, there was disappointment and despair for Dundalk, but there was delight for Derry City, who are through to the third round of the Europa Conference League. We'll have reaction from the Derry City camp. We'll also hear more about tonight's game here at Oriel Park. A 2 all draw against KA4 Dundalk. Not enough to put them through. They lose out 5-3 on aggregate. Also a bad night for Crusaders, Linfield, Larne and Shamrock Rovers who are all also out, but a very credible performance from Crusaders, who really pressed Rosenberg all the way and brought them to extra time. More from Oriel Park in a while, but first, let's get the story of how Derry qualified for the next round with former Derry City player Garth McGlynn, who watched their game against Coops of Finland and afterwards sent us this voice note. Thanks, Oisín. The final score from Finland is Cups 3, Derry City 3. And it was Derry City who dug deep to stun Lups in an incredible Europa Conference League qualifier in Finland. Very similar start to last week's game at the Brandywell, where Cups were comfortable in possession. But it was Rory Higgins' team to got off, who got off to the perfect start when they opened the scoring after just 13 minutes. It was Cups who lost possession in midfield and then Derry broke and they were ruthless. It was last week's match changer who came on was Paul McMullen. He crossed in from the right hand side for Keane Cavanagh to head in to the net from close range and of course that made it 3-1 on aggregate. The away side were looking comfortable but they were gifted a way back into the game when goalkeeper Brian Maher came to punch a corner. He completely missed the corner and it actually hit the back of Cups number 9 who didn't know anything about it and it rolled into the net. Derry then suffered another blow when they lost influential captain Patrick Michael and Adrian injury on, on the half hour. He was replaced by Sadio Diallo. Cup then struck again just before half time, as they did in the Brandywell a week ago. And again, there was a huge stroke of fortune for the home side as the striker he set up. It was Saku Savalini, whose weak shot was the, took a deflection off Cameron McJallant. And of course, that wrong footed Mar and it went into the net. And to be honest with you, the drama was just beginning to unfold. And as Derry hit back early in the second half, it was Diallo's substitute. He scored. He actually, it was patching the dummy to ball at the edge of the box. Diallo perfectly came onto it. Great timing. Struck a great shot. Hit the, the defender. Came back out to him. And he and he cushioned a left foot volley into the corner. Um, of course, that made it the candy stripes four, cups three. And that means they were ahead on aggregate. That lead lasted less than two minutes as cups cut the city defence apart with a very, very nice goal as one of their strikers ran through and scored the second, scored his second of the game. Listen, Derry City, as they did last week when they went back, when they were pegged back, it didn't deter them. Derry City then stunned Cups again by taking the lead. This time it was Michael Duffy sending a brilliant header past Keedle on the 69 minutes to put the visitors through 5-4 in aggregate. What a European night again for Derry City. Full credit to the team. They were pegged back quite a few teams, including in the first leg, but they come through and they go through in aggregate. They now have to head off to Kazakhstan next week. But before that, in the league, they've got to head to Dublin on Sunday to face UCD. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. And that is Derry Now columnist and, of course, former Derry City player Garth McGlynn on their magnificent performance and win in Finland. More from here in Oriel Park in a while. But first, let's just celebrate Derry's victory. Michael Keeley and Dermot Liddy were on commentary for Drive 105. I will also hear from Rory Higgins, the manager, in a moment, though. But first, well, just have a listen to this. It is pure passion and joy from the Drive 105 commentary team. Block joined up with the yeah! ball! The ball to Diallo! Yes! Diallo yes! puts it inside! And Derry City have now equalised after 54 minutes. Coops 2, Derry City 2. Yes. Um, and we're now being asked to be quiet by the fans of Coops. Appeal, well, frankly, we don't care. Appeals there for a penalty. Derry City City stops. Uh, Diallo, Tim, little chip cross towards Michael Duffy. Duffy header! Yeah. And it's a 3-3! Michael Duffy makes it 3-3! Comes in off his post. Header beating Creedle into that 3-3. It's raining goals and Coopio. 68 minutes gone. Coopio th- Coops 3, Derry City 3. What a fantastic ball. Well, Michael to the back post. And the yellow team just static. And it's full time here, and Derry City have drawn 3-3 and go through to the third round of the uh, Europa Conference League.
Rory, first of all, a historic night for Derry City uh, through to the third round. How does that feel as manager? Ah, amazing, amazing. It's the first time in 17 years we've, we've uh, reached the, the third round of European competition. So um, absolutely delighted for everyone associated with the football club and um, really proud to be the, the manager. You can hear the fans in the background. We're here 40 minutes after kickoff. They're still, you know... A small amount of fans, but uh, what does that you know? What does it mean to be a dairy manager out here, seeing just a small band of fans, but very dedicated? Well, I'll tell you what, it, it, it makes all the the really tough times that you go through um, all worthwhile. And and as as I said in, in recent times, our squad showing uh, a brilliant capacity to, to, to show resilience, and and um, that's what we want, and you need that to achieve. And, Really delighted for our supporters, the chairman, the board of directors, the players, the staff, everyone. Um, thrilled the bits. Derry started uh, on the back foot. They had a few set pieces, but Derry got the first goal. Kean Kavanagh, uh, st- beginning where he left off last week, scoring. And uh, two soft goals for Derry. Where did he fall behind? Uh, they were poor goals from our end. The first one was really poor from the set play. Second one's avoidable as well. Um, but we we were two one down at half time. The, the the tie was level with a half an hour or with a half a game of football to be played, and we knew we could step it up and and, and create chances. And we done that. And the players should be so proud of their efforts tonight. Um, substitutions again. We spoke about this all season. Really contributing very effectively. Derry Diallo comes on. What a hit for a goal and setting up Michael Duffy for a cracking header. Uh, it's a brilliant goal. Sads Sads is obviously disappointed he didn't start either game, but. His contribution to the club since he came here has been excellent. and Great goal, great uh, stand-up for Mickey Duffy at the back post and great header. So, listen, absolutely delighted uh, to, be, to be the manager of this football club and it's, it's special. These nights are absolutely special and never taken for granted, that's what I would say. Special nights, as you say, let's roll the clock back to Gothenburg where you played. Does this measure up to that level as well? Aye, well, the figurehead of the club, you're the, you're the manager, um, you have a lot of responsibility, so you would have to say it, it, it beats that. Um, but we'll not compare two special times. OK, fair enough. And uh, quick turnaround, it's Kazakhstan. It's, it's a long, arduous trip. But before that, Rory, it's a six-day turnaround. But be, Sammy's done there as UCD. Your thoughts on that? Aye, listen, it's, it's, it's not ideal. Uh, if, if we were to play Thursday out there, then you would accept it, given geographically it's a nightmare to get to Kazakhstan, so... Um, you would uh, listen. We would we would love to not have to do it, but if we have to do it, we'll we'll, we'll show professionalism and and and, and go to UCD and try and win. Uh, but I, ideally, it's not, it's not what we want. But again, if we have to do it, we have to do it. And the thoughts on the Kazakhstan? Have you uh, you'll have a look at them and see what that's about? A, a tough ask, really, but that's what you get when you go into the third qualifying round. Aye, uh, any game in Europe's tough. Um, We'll, uh, there's, we haven't looked at all because we had, we had a big enough job in our hands here tonight. We've got UCD on Sunday that we need to win. Uh, so, um, aye, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go and, and prepare the best way we can. Michael Duffy, you played in big European nights uh, for all our teams and that's a really special night for Derry City tonight. That's unbelievable. Um, that'll go down as one of the best, really. You know, that feeling there, getting over the line at the end and such a, it was a mad match, really. And, that's huge for the club, you know, we haven't done that in a long time and uh, it's brilliant, uh, brilliant for all us, brilliant for the fans, you know, the travelling fans, brilliant for everyone back home, it's a great night for us. And, you know, the small band of fans here, you know, they stay, they stay behind an hour, they congratulate you. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron Dummigan acting a whack there, and rightly so, but a uh, wee word in the fans, Michael. Oh, it's unbelievable commitment for them to travel out there. They sang all night, stay behind, singing this when we were out warm down, even walking back in the stay behind and we're singing and that's unbelievable. And I'm so happy that we we done the job for them and I heard back home was a bit crazy too, everywhere was out watching it and stuff and uh, that's uh, it's unbelievable night for the club. Well, Derry took the lead, probably against the runner play in the thirteenth minute, but you've got yourselves in front. Disappointing to give away the two maybe soft goals from a Derry's point of view, but to get yourselves back on and uh, substitute Sads Diallo comes on and massive contribution from not only from the goal but the cross for your your cracking header. Uh, big time Sads was um, unbelievable when he came on because it, it was a big loss for us, you know, losing uh, Fats so early. Um, Sads came on and he was brilliant the whole game, got his goal and he put the 
a putt uh, that cross was right in my head really I just had to guide it it was unbelievable from him he seen the run and he couldn't have put it any more perfect for me Crazy game the scoreline when they score three away in any game but in Europe uh, very significant but um, even when you fell behind was it like last week you sensed there was still goals on Derek I look because we were creating chances I know they had a lot of the ball and we were against the run of play obviously we got the first goal but uh, we knew there was going to be phases in the game we would get back into it we would create chances and uh, that's what we done. We just stuck at it, stuck to the plan, didn't give up, and it shows a resilience from us. It's brilliant that we just stuck at it and stuck at it all night and got it done. Well, it's uh, when you play in Europe as well. You know that the games can come quick and fast. You know, UCD Sammy's on there and something. Kazakhstan long trip, uh, Sammy's all on there by Wednesday playing that. So that'll be another two games. That's uh, three games in six days. But uh, things might change that way. But. Uh, We'll be looking forward to the next round, you know, it's where he's going to be, he's going to be in the third quarter round and a little long trip, you'll still look forward to that. Aye, of course, it's unbelievable, we've got there, the club hasn't done it in a long time and we can go and enjoy the game and go there and try to win as well, you know what I mean, uh, it's brilliant for us, obviously, we look now at Sunday, Sunday's our main focus, we have to switch off now and go back to the league and we, it's a must win on Sunday and then we can, then we can uh, focus on Europe then again, but it's unbelievable for us. And that was the reaction at full time to Dundalk's 2 all draw with KA, a result that means they won't progress to the third qualifying round of the Europa Conference League. Sitting with me here in Oriel Park is former Dundalk player Dane Massey. Dane, you were part of the LOI TV commentary team uh, today. You played in some big European games for Dundalk. You had some big European nights. Sadly, this did not turn out to be one of them. Yeah, sadly. Um, to be honest with you, Dundalk were very disappointed. I'm sure Stevie would be very disappointed as well. Um, KA were no much better. Like Dundalk had, a, had the most possession over the two legs and just couldn't score. And, you know, KA defensively very tight and attack, counter-attacked really well. And essentially, that's what's put Dundalk out of the toy. Is that the really frustrating thing, that Dundalk had enough territory, had enough possession, but just couldn't find the goals? Yeah, Dundalk essentially were, um, weren't a threat going for it at all. You know, their, their bo- the deliveries into the box were poor over the two legs. Um, they had no one really there to break through the lines with the ball, carry the ball, you know, just that spark to ignite the team. And and um, it, just, it just looked easy to defend against tonight, again, side to side and no real threat. There was... And this is real layman's term stuff, so please correct me if I'm wrong. There seemed to be no pace in the attack, especially in the second half. Is there anything that could have been done about that? Is that down to KA just being very solid, very physically strong? Or is that down to Dundalk just being a little bit off and not being able to up at that level? It's a bit of both, you know. KA are defensively set up right, you know. The centre of park, Rodri and Edmondson, um, tactically were very astute you know um, they were letting Dundalk down the sides and, and unfortunately Dundalk couldn't um, their crosses into the box weren't great tonight um, so look KA were happy enough to let the ball go down the, um, down the sides of them and Dundalk's main threat is Pat, threat is Pat Hoban and he's a central player and he thrives off coming off short off centre halves and Rodri was there to clean up and like Rodri was man of the match over the two toys I think yeah, he was. And in the second half, I thought, especially at the start of the second half, right, Dundalk are going to come out firing here. It's one all. They're still in this. They've had the territory. They've had the possession. If they can just create a few more chances, it's there for them. But KA did a very smart thing. They just completely cut Rhino Kane out of the game and his influence was minimal. And even Daniel Kelly struggled to get crosses in. Yeah, Daniel Kelly um, really, really struggled to get any sort of space to know any balls that he got onto were balls over the top. And we thought Archie Davis done really well. They were giving Archie a bit of space and he stood up and, and took it to them. He put a few great balls in in the first half, but unfortunately it just wasn't enough. Um, tactically, I think KA have got it bang on. Yeah, they certainly have. There was one man you'd want out there tonight. Unfortunately, he wasn't available. He was signed just that little bit too late, Daryl Horgan. How delighted are you to see him back at the club? A guy that you would have played here with and had a lot of good games with, good times with. Yeah, it's great. It's, it gives Dundalk a massive lift, you know. Myself and Daryl had a great partnership through the years. 
and um, I know I was chatting to him before the game he, he can't wait to get going he's raging that he wasn't um, eligible for tonight but that's the sort of player that Dundalk missed tonight just that player to carry the ball through the lines that bit of spark you know someone to create that little bit of magic to G of the rest of the lads and um, hopefully now we can kick on in the league now and, and do really well and fight for that European spot for next year They have a game on Sunday against Shelburne is that the ideal situation to have a game that soon so they can bounce back and they can get to work on getting back to Europe next season. Yeah, exactly. And it's against Shelburne, it's going to be a massive game. You know, Shells are a point behind them in the league. Um, so it's a must-win game for Dundalk if they have any aspirations to go on and get into Europe. So yeah, Daryl's going to be um, Darryl will be uh, fit for selection there. So he, he's chomping at the bit to get out there. Is it hard to bounce back after a big blow like this? Because going out of Europe, it, it can be a hard one to take, can't it? Yeah, it's a massive blow, but... Like it's the league that's your bread and butter and you won't get nights like these unless you don't do it in the league so it's important that they do and, and they grind out the results in the league beat the likes of Shelburne Dundalk should be in Europe year in year out they're a big club you can see KA's reaction tonight after beating Dundalk it's a big scalp for them Yeah. and what about Stevie O'Donnell as a manager you knew him as a player is he, is he the kind of manager you'd like to have played under yeah definitely you know Stevie's a great guy his knowledge for the game is phenomenal he's great experience in the game and he's doing really well I speak to the lads um, we keep in touch with all the guys here and uh, they've only good things to say about Stephen yep. and anyone who did play under Stephen Kenny that time seems to have that connection to the club just before I let you go um, your favourite memories of being a Dundalk player oh, my favourite memories it would probably be hard to beat the first night we won the league here at Packed Out Stadium um, my first league title and it meant so much like it meant so much to the team that group of players and the town itself it was huge and I know that you believe they can drive on and get back to Europe and they're still in the cup so there's still an awful lot to play for Dave Massey thanks very much for joining us on the extratime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast sadly not a great night for Dundalk two all on the night they lose 5-3 in aggregate they're out of Europe but they're back in action on Sunday afternoon when they take on Shelburne Dane, thank you very much. No problem at all. Well, that's almost it for the extratime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast from Oriel Park. A disappointing night in Dundalk. A two-all draw on the night, but it was the 3-1 defeat away last week that really did for them. Uh, Robbie Benson, of course, still such a huge huge loss, as is John Mountney. And maybe, just maybe Dundalk, well, their squad depth caught up with them in this particular tie. Still lots for them to fight for, of course, this season. They can still qualify for Europe for next season through this season's league and they're still in the FAI Cup unlike the team they play on Sunday Shelburne the European scorecard well how does it read at the moment for Derry it's not complete let's hope it goes on for another wee while they're away to Kazakhstan next Thursday the home leg by the way will possibly be at Tallis Stadium I saw Daniel uh, McDonnell a tweet about that beforehand Daniel McDonnell of course of the Irish Independent that because of restrictions on the Ryan McBride Brandywell Tallis might be the venue where Derry City have to play their home legs from for, from now on in Europe. And let's hope there's a few more home games to play in Europe for them. Going back to the score of card for St. Pat's, well, disappointing. They fell at the first hurdle for Shamrock Rovers, in a footballing context, disastrous. Four games, four defeats, including their 2-0 loss to Ferns Farosh, um, well, last night, as you listen, in Tallis Stadium. Now, they still have an awful lot to fight for, of course, as do St. Pat's, as do Dundalk, because Rovers are still top of the pile they're still top of the league Dundalk they're back in action on Sunday against Shelburne as I mentioned that day Shamrock Rovers up against Cork City in Tallis Stadium and Kevin Doherty we found out during the week said no to Cork City a lot of City fans including myself would be disappointed with that because he is a very good manager that's great news for Drogheda United that he is staying Derry City by the way back in action on Sunday afternoon they're away to UCD Uh, Tonight, that's, well, tonight as you listen, tomorrow night as I record, Bohemians take on Drogheda United and Sligo Rovers are up against St. Pat's in the first division. It's Treaty against Longford, Cove against Wexford, Bray taking on at Lone, Waterford up against Kerry and Finn Harps taking on Galway. What does the table look like in the Premier Division? Well, it's looking like this. Shamrock Rovers on 47 points. They're four points clear of St. Pat's. Derry City in third on 43 points. Bohemians fourth on 42. Dundalk fifth on 39. Shelburne sixth on 38. Sligo Rovers 7th on 30 and of course they've lost Max Matter now. now he's gone to Shrewsbury Town what a big blow that is um, they're still one point ahead of Drogheda United Drogheda United are in 8th on 29 points Cork City 2nd from bottom on 23 and UCD bottom on 9 points that's almost it for the extratime.com uh, League of Ireland Voice Notes European Special Podcast before we go 
a very special happy birthday message to Daryl O'Connor, uh, ExtraTime.com's youngest and best reporter. He turned 11 uh, well, last night as you listen. Of course, you'll know his dad, uh, Tom, from ExtraTime.com and the Twitter account. I think it's Bosco is Alive, something like that. Tom actually came out with a great day in Massey stash a couple of weeks ago. Speaking about the guest we had earlier in the show, he said that there's only one player who is playing on Toberty's first night hosting the Late Eight as his last night hosting the Late Late. Now, a lot has happened since, but back then it was also innocent, wasn't it? That player, by the way, was Dane Massey. A useless stat for you. That's it for myself, Oshin Langan. I'll talk to you soon. You can get me on at Extra Time. I'm sorry, at Oshin Langan, uh, but you can get Extra Time on at Extra Time News. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.